Hello and welcome to Threepwoods Thrifts. In this video I will show you a fantastic portable Amiga and how you can have your own. To accomplish this a PS Vita is required. They are a great device but among lots of other things they have an outstanding battery life and a superb screen. My PS Vita 1000 model will last over 6 hours of playing time on a single charge and it has a beautiful OLED screen. Ok you're going to need a number of files, the majority of which I'll put in the description below but some of the files are licensed so you're going to have to source them yourself such as these kickstart ROMs. Now you're going to need the kickstart rom 1.3 and 3.1 basically for the mega 500 and the mega 1200 you need to name them in this way in order for the emulator to work on the vita so i've met, got a folder in here which is everything i'm going to transfer to the vita some floppy games floppy disk games and the emulator itself so once you've unlocked your Vita, you'll get this program called Vita Shell, and we'll use this um, to FPT the files across to from the PC. And on the PC, we use an app, or I'm using an app called WinSCP. Just enter your credentials, no username or no password, and just drag and drop those files from your PC onto your Vita. So back onto the Vita, go back into the application Vita Shell and just locate those files you dragged across. So in UXO. And we just need to install the emulator which is UAE for all and once you've installed it just delete it you don't need that anymore and what we need to do is we just need to run the application on the Vita now just to create the folders where you need to put the rest of the files and then once again go back into Vita shell and then now move these files, the basically the game floppies, ADFs and your kickstart ROMs into the emulators directory in the uh, appropriate folders. Which is basically in data UAE for all and then you need to put the kickstart ROMs in kickstart not ROMs, that's, um, sorry this is a mistake, we need to copy them back out of there. You put the floppy disks, the ADFs in ROMs, not the kickstart ROMs. So I'll just move them back out there. And into the appropriate folder, kickstarts. If you want to add any more games you just put all your games in in the uh, ROMs folder and you're good to go. Open the emulator back up, browse in the uh, floppy disk, let's give our type a go and you've got a portable Amiga, a good one at that. But if you want to go to the next level, you can set the emulator up to have an Amiga hard drive, or should I say a virtual Amiga hard drive. This is where all the games can be installed. Doing this significantly reduces loading times and removes the need for disk swapping. Let's take a look. 
Okay, we're going to need some more files. Now, the majority of them will be linked in the description below. So the games in here are called WHD Load Games, which are basically installed games uh, which are meant to be put on Amiga hard drives. And we've got an application here called Tiny Launcher, which is a very good lightweight front end for launching games. And the version of Workbench, which is like an operating system, which is called Classic Workbench Lite. We need the original Workbench disk 3.0 in order to install this software, which is within the link. Win UAE can be a bit overwhelming, but if you follow these options and settings, you should be fine. Okay, we're just going through the setup process of Classic Workbench. It asks us for our Workbench disk, so just browse that in. Get back into the Win UAE options by clicking F12 on the keyboard. Okay, we just run through the setup of Classic Workbench now. It'll go through some options that are required to work on this installation on the Vita and some are just user preference. For example, this set setting here is user preference. I prefer 1.3. AGA copper backgrounds, that's not required. Black borders, not required. F blit and F text is required. Stack attack, not required. Hard drive ENV required. Anti click not required. Freewheel not required. And smart wind patch required. Okay, that's classic workbench installed. Just need to click F12 and eject the virtual floppy disk and give the emulator a reset. Now you can see. Classic Workbench has been installed correctly. Give it a hard reset and now we need to create our own hard drive which we're going to make it 900 megabytes. Anything bigger than this seems to cause the Amiga Vita emulator an issue. So we need to put Classic Workbench Lite onto the new 900 megabyte hard drive or virtual hard drive. This just gives us more space to put more games on I suppose um, so we're just and then also we're going to add in the PC um, directory so it just means that we can put files from the PC directly onto the uh, virtual Amiga hard drive using the WinUE the Amiga emulator so we've started it back up it'll pick up the new drive will um, workbench and we just need to format it to do that, left click this DH1 NDOS icon, then right click icons, format disk, and just change the new volume name to system, and then click quick format. Now we need to transfer the files from Classic Workbench Lite onto the new 900 megabyte hard drive. We do that by using Dopus. So right click the S icon here and that'll show all the drives and devices available on the system double click DH0 and then left click the right hand pane 
and then right click S again. Now we need to double click DH1 which is the new hard drive and then over on the left side left click the system bar and then left click all and then left click copy and that'll copy all the files from classic workbench light onto the new hard drive that we've created. So F click F12 and give the emulator a restart and we need to remove DH0 so I'll just click remove and then our new hard drive we need to change that to DH0 make sure we've still got the PC directory browsed in because we're going to need some files from the PC to inject into our Amiga setup so using Dopus in the same way right clicking S button to list the drives and swapping files between the left and right hand panes uh, browsing drive P which is the PC and on the right hand side and then we need to go to DH0 devs kickstarts on the left and we need to copy the kickstarts from the PC across onto the Amiga hard drive and what we're going to do now is install tiny launcher in the programs folder so just navigate through that on the left side and then select tiny launcher on the right and then use the arc extract button and that'll install the program onto the Amiga virtual hard drive and then let's just put some games in we don't all the, the we don't need all these subfolders we'll just get rid of them for now and we'll just load in a selection of games in the same way installing them by selecting them all and arc extract into the relevant folder so that's dh0 games and we don't need that pc directory anymore so let's restart it and see if it's yep so we're all good to go now so let's give it a bit of a test so let's find the front end games loader tiny launcher and give that a go so if you remember we put it in programs but it's not here so we right click window and show not clean up sorry window show all and it's there just double click that okay and you're in so we just need to just system configure press one and you just type in dh0 colon games enter and then F1 to scan and find the games and then let's just test one cannon fodder seeing as though we've just had Amsty Day Now, you might think that's a bit convoluted to get to the point of launching a game or getting into Tiny Launcher, i.e., like browsing through the Amiga Windows uh, operating system to get there. We can remove that step by changing the startup sequence here. All we need to do is add a line near the bottom and just put that same DH0 colon and browsing the program directory of tiny launcher so colon programs forward slash tiny launcher dot exe and then when you stick up to the top on the bar right click it project save and then every time we boot into the emulator or into this specific setup it will um, launch tiny launcher like so So now we're happy with this setup, let's get it onto the Vita. Now again, using WinSCP, we can FTP into the Vita and transfer that hard drive file across onto it. It doesn't really matter on the system where you put the file but I like to put it in a file within the emulator folder called HDF 
um, you just browse in the file within the emulator and you're all set. You can do all the file transfers between the Vita and the PC over USB. Um, this process over the FTP will take some time. It's probably faster via USB, so I'll just speed it up a little bit. Now let's launch the emulator, browse in that hard drive file and change some settings and then we're good to go. Once it's all set up, I like to um, save the configuration. So next time I come to use it, I just one click load it up. Once you're back in the settings menu, just click the right shoulder button and then it will restart the emulation and load you up. Like so. That little mod puts us straight into Tiny Launcher. So again, let's try a game. Make sure it all works on the Vita itself. The Vita analog sticks actually work really well as a mouse and the shoulder buttons work again really well as left and right click. Let's give it a spin. <laughs> 